you could be undervaluing your time and overvaluing the amount of money that you make at your job. So today we're going to talk about a concept called the real hourly wage. Understanding your real hourly wage, not just your salary or gross wages, can be a game changer. It can help you reevaluate how you spend your time and understand if your job and all the headache that comes with it is worth it. Let's start by defining real hourly wage. Whether you're salaried or hourly, we all know how to calculate our hourly rate. But the real hourly wage takes into account additional things, like the additional costs associated with working and the additional time that we spend doing job-related things. Let's dig into this because this is actually a really important concept because we need to dig into two important metrics that are often overlooked. And the first is job-associated costs, which include commuting costs, business clothes, meals, escape entertainment, convenience that you pay for as a result of being exhausted, and any other cost related to your job. And if we really want to go down the rabbit hole, we could include the cost of healthcare and mental health counseling that we need because of burnout. The second overlooked metric is the additional time you spend working, preparing for work, or even winding down from work. You may officially work nine to five, but how much time do you spend on the following? Do you check email outside of work hours? Do you have a long commute? How much time do you spend decompressing after work? And how much time do you spend in front of the TV because you're tired? Let me give an example. Let's say you earn $62,400 a year as a salaried employee, or $30 per hour for the standard 40 hour work week. This means that you earn $1,200 per week, except as a salaried employee, you are not paid overtime and you actually average about 45 hours per week. You also have to go into the office three times per week with a 30 minute commute each way. This means you spend an additional three hours commuting each week and an average of $60 per week on gas and car maintenance. You also value building relationships with those you work with. So you take a break with your colleagues and buy coffee on those three days. And let's assume that that coffee costs you $5 per day. When you sign off for the day, you're exhausted. You spend 30 minutes scrolling social media before you can do anything else. And the two to three times a week you go into the office, you're too tired to prepare dinner. So you order takeout from a local restaurant, spending an average of $40 per night. The original $1,200 per week is reduced by $195 in just commuting, coffee, and takeout expenses. So that's $1,005 after accounting for those. The original 45 hours per week is increased by 5.5 hours to 50.5 hours when you factor in the decompression and commuting time. So what was $30 per hour is actually a real hourly wage of $19.90. The point of the real hourly wage in this example is to give you a framework to help you reflect on how you use your time and money. I'm not trying to make you feel bad or convince you that you make less than you thought. Instead, I simply wanna help you see that there are hidden costs that you might have ignored. With this knowledge, you can ask yourself, is it worth it? Is the amount of time and energy you're putting into your job worth the money that you're receiving from it? Real hourly wage is one of the key concepts in one of my favorite books called Your Money or Your Life. This book absolutely changed my life and I talk about the real hourly wage and two other life-changing concepts in this video. Check it out to learn more.